Are you looking for pelvic floor strengthening exercises? Perhaps you've had a baby or three and your pelvic floor isn't what it used to be. Or maybe you're someone struggling with incontinence or prolapse. If so, this video is for you. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Hannah. I'm a yoga teacher. I'm a yoga teacher trainer. And our mission here on Alba Yoga's YouTube is to help spread science-based ways to help you move and live better. Please subscribe if you like this video, it helps to grow our channel, allowing us to make better videos for you all. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you three things. Firstly, the anatomy of the pelvic floor, which muscles are involved. Secondly, dysfunction, why things can go wrong. And lastly, and most importantly, what can we do to help our pelvic floor. Please note, this is for educational purposes only. I am not a doctor, and if you have chronic pelvic floor dysfunction, I highly recommend you speak to a trusted medical professional. Now, the pelvic floor is a remarkable and intricate network of muscles, ligaments, and connective tissue that form a supportive hammock across the bottom of our pelvis. This essential structure plays a pivotal role in supporting the pelvic organs such as the bladder, intestines, and in women, the uterus. It ensures the proper functioning of the urinary and anal sphincters, contributing to continence and supports sexual function by enhancing sensation and response. At the core of the pelvic floor is a group of muscles called the levator ani that provide essential support. These muscles stretch from the front of the pelvis to the tailbone at the back, forming a central support structure. One part of this muscle group loops around the rectum, helping to control bowel movements by creating a bend in the rectum that acts as a barrier. Another part of this muscle group helps to lift and support the pelvic organs. Beneath this primary group of muscles is another muscle that goes from the hip bone to the tailbone. This muscle supports the pelvic organs and helps stabilize the pelvis. The perineum, which is the area between the pubic bone and the tailbone, also contains important muscles that contribute to sexual function and help with urination and ejaculation in men and vaginal contraction in women. Understanding the pelvic floor is really vital. A healthy pelvic floor not only supports these pelvic organs, but also contributes to overall core stability, efficient movement, and enhanced quality of life. Knowing about these three muscles, it's helpful because when you're doing your pelvic floor exercises, it isn't just a lifting sensation you're after, like many people cue, it's actually a zip. More on this shortly. Now, the pelvic floor muscles are not isolated in their function. They work in concert with the diaphragm and the deep core muscles to maintain something called intra-abdominal pressure and provide dynamic stability to the spine and pelvis. There is more on this if you're interested in this video here. Understanding the anatomy and function of the pelvic floor underscores its importance in overall health and well-being. Dysfunction in these muscles, whether due to weakness, overactivity, childbirth or injury, can lead to significant issues such as urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, pelvic organ prolapse, and chronic pain. So now we know what the pelvic floor is, why do these muscles get weak? And why do they have problems? Childbirth is of course a very common reason, but it is definitely not the only reason. Men also have problems as do women. Age is another factor, but also it's way of life. What do we all do way too much of? Sitting at a desk, in the car, on the sofa. We aren't using the muscles enough and they can get weak as a result. So what can we do about it? Let me help you. If you are going to write one thing down, listening to me today, let it be this. We need both strength and flexibility in the pelvic floor. We need to be able to contract it and release it fully. Think of this as an example. You want a strong bicep. You don't just pick up a weight and go round like this all day day. No. Why? Because that would give you a very tight and short muscle that's also very, very tired. So going around all day, lifting your pelvic floor isn't a good idea. And in fact, a very, very well-respected women's health physio, Claire Bourne, once told me that with every patient she sees with pelvic floor issues like incontinence or prolapse, the first thing she always teaches them is to release the pelvic floor. 
Now this is because we need to be able to release it to allow it to strengthen optimally. And one way she finds helpful for her patients is to ask them to picture the area releasing like an elevator going down. I also find it really helpful to put students in child's pose and ask them to breathe into the belly, let the belly be soft, move with the breath and then imagine the sitting bones opening on the inhale. If you're sitting there nodding and think you need help in releasing, check out this really helpful class called Restorative Core, which will help you release. So let's talk about the zip method I mentioned earlier. On the inhale, you want to fully let go, release the pelvic floor, think of that elevator going down, letting go of any tension in the area and in the belly. On the exhale, imagine zipping up and lifting up from the anus all the way to the urethra. Inhale and fully release. If that was hard, please don't worry. Over time, it will get easier. Now, we can't just stop here. We need to make it functional because what we're trying to do is help the pelvic floor become strong and reflexive. And what that means is we want it to turn on when we want it to turn on and to the right level. Bringing awareness and coordination here so our pelvic floor starts to fire and engage naturally throughout our day without us having to think about it. When we squat to grab a toy from the floor. When we jump to catch a ball when we are living our lives. So our pelvic floor starts to contract and naturally support our spine, our bladder, our anus, and all the organs of the abdominal cavity. So let's get into the functional exercises. So first up is one that's really good for proprioception, i.e. understanding what's going on there. And what you can do is practice the same engagement technique, that zip technique from before, but this time you're gonna be sitting over a bolster or a rolled up towel or a pillow because it allows you to feel the area. Just like before, you're gonna imagine that zip on the exhale like you're trying to stop wind and lift up through the middle and stop the flow of urine. And then again, you're gonna to inhale to fully release. Try 10 repetitions holding the exhale for four to five seconds, but if you can't hold it that long yet, don't worry, do what you can and work up to it over time. Next exercise, we're gonna to come to all fours. It can be nice to grab a block or a pillow and place it in between the thighs as our inner thighs share connections with the pelvic floor. So contracting those inner thighs can help actually engage our pelvic floor. You're gonna do exactly the same as before, inhaling fully release, and then exhale, you're gonna squeeze the block or the cushion and feel that zip as if you're trying to stop wind and trying to stop urine. And again, you're gonna try and do this 10 times and then take a break, holding each contraction for about four to five seconds. You can do exactly the same thing in bridge pose too. And lastly, let's try squatting. Coming up to stand, you're gonna inhale, let the belly be soft, let the pelvic floor go, imagine that elevator. And then as you exhale, you're gonna take your squat, lift the pelvic floor as you do so, and hold for around four to five seconds. Inhale, legs straighten, and you're gonna release, Fully release the breath. Try again this 10 times and see how you get on. Now, as a reminder, the intention with these exercises is to increase your strength, coordination, and reflexiveness of your pelvic floor. So in time, you will squat, jump, and leap without having to purposely think about engaging. If you like more science-based yoga videos, hit the subscribe button below to help support our channel and allow us to create more content for you. And if you have any questions about this video or anything we've covered, please drop it down in the comments. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.